so liver it is the largest gland of a body it is the largest gland which is found towards the right side of the abdominal cavity it is somewhere around 1.2 to 1.5 in kgs if we see the structure of the liver we will see that it somewhat looks like this so this is the structure of liver now you see that this largest thing you see in here is what we are referring to now liver is found right to the stomach and it is the largest gland of the body it is majorly made up of two lobes the right and the left so this is the right lobe and this one is the left lobe in here okay now if we see the labelings we will find that here this duct it is the right hepatic duct so it arises from the right lobe of the liver similarly this in here is the left hepatic duct so these two ducts they arise from the liver and they join together in here to form common hepatic duct so we can say that common hepatic duct is formed by the combination or joining of the left and right hepatic duct so moving forward if we see that there is an organ or a, which is present just at the, you know the right lobe of the liver and this organ is called the gall bladder so gall bladder is present very close to the liver and it also gives out a duct and this duct is called the cystic duct so the cystic duct is given out by the gall bladder now if you notice in here the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct they are combining to form a single duct and this single duct is what we call the common bile duct so this is the common bile duct which is the, formed by the combination of the cystic duct as well as the common hepatic duct this common bile duct going further it combines with the pancreatic duct so this green organ that you see in here is pancreas so pancreas they also give out a duct which is called as pancreatic duct and the combination of common bile duct and the pancreatic duct it forms a single duct which is called hepato pancreatic duct so now hepato pancreatic duct it opens into the duodenum this region that you see in here is the duodenum okay now do you notice that there is something yellow color in here this yellow part is the opening of this hepato pancreatic duct and this is what we call ampulla of waiter okay so this is ampulla of waiter which guards the or which is the opening of the hepato pancreatic duct so till now you have seen the structure of liver and its various ducts moving forward let us observe the internal structure of the liver so let's observe the histology of liver which means that we are going to see its internal structure and observe that what all type of cells etc are present in the liver let's see what are they so this is how the liver looks like internally now if you notice that it has various lobes and these are the hepatic lobes so each hepatic lobe it has number of cells in it so these are the cells which are called hepatocytes all these cells which are lined in here these are all the hepatocytes meaning the cells of liver next if you see 
that there are some cells present in these cavities and these cells are called Kaffir cells. Now there is something very important about the Kaffir cells that these are the phagocytic cells which are present in the liver. Okay. Now next year at the end you see that there are three circles being made. These three they are called a portal triad. But let us find out first what are they. So this is the hepatic artery. This is the hepatic artery. Next to it is the bile duct and the last one in here is the portal vein. So these three together are termed as portal triad. So this is portal triad and they help in the supply of blood throughout the liver. The bile duct it has a different function which we will see later. Now also the outermost covering of the liver is what we call the glissens capsule. So glissens capsule it covers the entire surface of the liver. In the center there is present central vein. So this is the central vein. Now all the branches of hepatic ducts they right and lobe are combined to form right and left hepatic duct which come out from the liver as a common hepatic duct. The hepatic artery and the portal vein they enter into the liver and divide to form many branches. These branches are also found at some angular parts of the liver. Now these branches they open into some hepatic sinusoids mean, meaning the voids and they together all these three they together form the portal triad. So this was the transverse section of a liver or the histology of the liver. Moving forward let us observe some of the functions of the liver. So some of the functions of liver they are majorly first of all it helps in the secretion and synthesis of bile. Now what exactly is bile? Well the bile is a fluid kind of substance which consists majorly of few parts like water, bile pigment, then bile salt and cholesterol and phospholipid. So water it forms the solvent part of the bile and the bile pigments are bilirubin and biliverdin. Similarly the bile salts are sodium glycocholate and sodium taurocholate. Let us zoom in and find out the various other functions of the liver. Okay. So observing carefully we see that the bile it contains bile pigment, bile salt and cholesterol as well as phospholipid. The bilirubin and biliverdine are the bile pigments which give them lightish green in color. Similarly the bile salts are present such as sodium glycocholate and sodium taurocholate. These two they help in forming the bile pigments. Next we see the functions of liver as carbohydrate metabolism. This is one of again the most important functions of liver wherein we will see three processes. The first process is the glycogenesis, the second is the glyconeolysis and the third is glucogenolysis. Of course the name sounds a little tricky but their meaning is pretty simple. So glycogenesis means the conversion of glucose into glycogen. Similarly, the glyconeolysis means the conversion of glycogen into glucose and lastly the gluconeogenesis is the conversion of excess of amino acids and fats into glucose. So first the glycogenesis it is the conversion of excess of glucose into glycogen. So whenever we eat food we intake a lot of glucose and this excess of glucose is converted into the form of glycogen and it is stored in there. Now next 
whenever our body requires a lot of glucose this stored glycogen it gets converted back into the glucose with the help of gluconeolysis and lastly the excess of amino acids in the proteins they are converted into glucose so these three together are termed as carbohydrate metabolism now next if we see function of liver it helps in the storage of fat next it helps in the deamination and urea formation so all the protein it gets broken down the excess of protein it gets broken down in the liver and it helps in the formation of a toxic substance called urea now this urea is formed in the liver but it is excreted out with the help of kidneys next is the detoxification so the detoxification of drugs or poisons take place again in the liver liver is also responsible for the synthesis of vitamin a so these are some of the very important functions of liver beside that liver is also responsible for hemopoiesis in the fetal state which means the formation of rbcs and wbcs also take place in the liver when an organism or mammal is in the uh, embryonic stage similarly some proteins like prothrombin or fibrinogen are also produced by the hepatic cells some factors which are responsible for blood clotting they are also produced by the liver liver is also responsible for making some plasma or blood plasma proteins so liver it is one of the most important glands in our body and it performs various functions now moving forward let us observe some of the functions of pancreas